there are these other ways of thinking that exist outside of where you, you've spent the large majority of your life. And so all I did was help enrich your reality by sharing with you other ways you can navigate your inner landscape. Most of the things that were keeping me from freedom had nothing to do with the government. It was all in my own head. I am feeling very much like I'm ready to uh, take the next level. From Acapulco, Mexico, this is Anarchast. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet in a beautiful place, uh, Jasper, Alberta, which is actually pretty close to where I grew up. And I'm actually kind of here for a reason. I've been here for about a week with this guy. His name's Johnny Dupre of Process Potential. And I've actually been working with him for about a year, sort of over, just over Skype. And he's, uh, you know, I'll let you describe what you do, but it's sort of like hypnosis, but also so many other things, it's all related. But he actually has been doing sort of hypnosis therapy with me over the internet for about a year about maybe five or six or seven times and uh, really got to the point where I said okay this is actually working I can see this is working uh, but uh, when I was talking to you you're like well it's gonna really take quite a while to do but if we did it all we could get through a lot of it in about a week so I've been here for about a week and I do have to say I'm a changed person um, you will probably see this over the coming weeks and months um, the, all the things that I've been kind of talking about that I've been looking for and this has gone through Ayahuasca, boga, uh, psh, name any psychedelic, uh, name any kind of physical therapy, uh, pretty much everything. I tried everything, but I always came back to still not happy. Can't figure out why I'm not happy. And uh, Johnny, uh, you know, we'll get into what exactly we've gone through here, what I've gone through, and uh, how it really has. I, I've never felt happier and it's not like a trick or anything. It's not like, you know, like I'm hypnotized right now and then I'll walk away and, and I, oh, I'm back to back to bad again or anything like that. Like we went through a lot this week and uh, this to me is kind of the answer I was looking for and the answer I think a lot of people are looking for. And so we're going to get into a lot of that because I want to, you know, help everyone out there, especially anarchists, uh, you know, get better uh, and I think we're all damaged to a certain degree and, and a lot of programming that's we'll get into that as well programming you know it's not just the television programming it's the programming from your parents it's the programming from your cults your culture your society uh, that I actually didn't realize but I had a ton of it and you helped me get it out and uh, we'll go into all the things I did but I am a changed person as as we speak and uh, never felt better. So let's get into it, Johnny. Uh, first question I have to ask you though, because I ask this question of everyone, uh, just to make sure you're a decent person, is how did you become an anarchist? Uh, for me, I, I actually spent the, the majority of the beginning of my life falling prey to the programming that most people fi find themselves in. Um, but unlike a lot of people, I had some really rude awakenings early on in my life as to how safe these programs were actually making me due to some traumas that occurred to me early on in my own life. And so as a result, I was forced to sort of look beyond what society would say was normal because I wasn't living a normal life. So as I got older, I had to seek uh, outside of the system, outside of what would be considered typical, and really explore my own answers. And over time, I really believed that. I, I think I started creating the shift in my own mindset around more of a free thinking anyway early on to find a solution to what had occurred to me in my own life. And so for me, I believe that, that anarchy or anarchy type thinking started much earlier than I was even aware of. Um, but I really became officially aware of how I needed to shift my mindset on, on a more of a sociological level, uh, probably anywhere between 21 and 24 years old when I met my mentor, uh, one of my teachers, and he really showed me, listen, there's a lot more going on than any of us are even aware of. And so I ended up reading a bunch of books. Uh, and then, of course, I came to Anacapoco uh, to give a, a, a talk, uh, not at Anacapoco, but a, at an event that was just after it, and started hearing everyone's speaking in ways that my mentors and teachers had been speaking about and I went there's an entire community for this <laughs> like I had no idea I thought my teacher was a little a uh, little crazy a little nuts a little out there uh, and as a result I've been exploring those thoughts ever since that's great and 
one of the things I've really noticed, and this is something that I've been hovering around the idea for a while and definitely been changing the last few years, is with anarchy related things, we're talking about freedom, about not wanting these government controls over people, not wanting people to be enslaved. And we mm. talk a lot, obviously, about freedom. But what I've come to learn in the last year or two is that most of the things that were keeping me from freedom had nothing to do with the government. It was all in my own head. And I really did not realize it. So we'll try to expand on that a little bit more because I know a lot of you are like, what's he talking about? But really the bars in my own mind that I learned this week that we actually uh, removed a lot of them were way more detrimental to me, way more. <laughs> exponentially more detrimental than anything any government has ever done to me. And I think a lot of other people out there are a lot like that, and they don't realize it. It's a lot like David Icke says, who's speaking at Narcopoca next year. Uh, most people are, are living in a prison, uh, in, in actual bars, but they can't see the bars and they think they're free. And so much of this comes to what's in your head and, and what you don't even know that's in your head. The unconscious stuff, that really, unless you can figure out what's going on there, you really probably will never really find true peace or happiness. You have to connect with and figure out what all the bad stuff that's in there that you don't even know about. So to, to start talking about this, this is such a complex sort of thing. And we did so many things this week and I don't even know how to explain most of the things we did really. And you, you said it'll probably take me a few months to even realize what we all did. How would you explain what happened to me this week. To, to people out there who are like, well, it sounds like he went to a crazy hypnotist, he got hypnotized, <laughs> and now he, he says he's all good, but he's probably just hypnotized. What, what, what did I go through this week? How would you explain that to people? Um, the way I would explain it is this. If you're born into a prison, and all you've ever known is a prison, and no one's ever made you aware that there, there's an entire world or an entire existence that, that exists outside of the prison walls, then that's the only reality that you're ever aware of. And as a result of that, the way you structure your own reality and your relationship to that reality is built around that context. So as a result, we, we, our brains operate through what we call the contrast principle. So if I can't understand up without down, I can't understand left without right, I can't understand light without dark, because you need to know its opposite in order for you to relate to it. This week I spent a great deal of time with you just showing you different ways you could perceive reality so that you can see a bigger context. And my teacher actually says it's like getting out of bucket land. Like if all you've ever known is you live inside of bucket land, then, then you're actually not aware of the prison that you're within until somebody goes, oh, by the way, there's this other context. There's this other way of living. There are these other ways of thinking that exist outside of where you've, you've spent the large majority of your life. And so what I did is I just helped you to dig through what's, a, what's happened to you in your own life in order for you to see the bigger context and the bigger frame that's at play. And you can call this sociology, like I'm looking at the bigger systems that are at play, whether it's government or not. But most of the time we're just raised in what our parents believed and what our guardians believed, teachers, uh, the people that exist inside of your space, because they're the ones you bounce or reflect your reality off of. And so you coming and working with me gave me an opportunity to share with you some of the realities I've played in. So it acts almost like a psychosocial education in, in shifting and changing awareness so that you learn to guide your attention in such a way as to explore your own, your own self-imposed imprisonment. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm still trying to get my head around what exactly has happened, I, but I've never felt better. I've been felt feeling this way for days, but every day I feel even better. It's, it's unbelievable. And going back and even just looking at my Facebook posts just to see, because it seems like a week ago that was a different person completely now. And so I'm like trying to piece together. And some people might be out there going, well, it sounds like he went through, through something crazy. Like, this sounds crazy. It's not that crazy, but it was so much all at once that I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. I remember the first thing though, on the first day, and we spent a lot of time talking that day about just, you know, stuff like, what, what have you gone through? And you would dig deeper and you'd dig deeper and ask me, and you'd make me ask questions of myself. And then you'd say, where'd you get that idea? And I'd go, well, wait, where is, I can't remember why I think that. And, um, 
we really dug the first day, if I remember correctly, and I was quite shocked to find out, because I say to a lot of people, and a lot of people go, Jeff Berwick doesn't seem to have much fear. He shows up at Bilderberg, he doesn't care. He doesn't seem to have any fear of what the repercussions of what he does when he's standing up to the power structures mm. is. But it turns out I had a lot of fear. And, but the fear was something I never expected. It was an actual fear. And it, this took hours to dig through for me to realize this. It was a fear of my own power. Maybe you could just expand on, on what happened there before we get into the next sort of thing that happened. But like, what, how did we even come to that? And do you know what I'm saying? Like, how did we even uh, come to this realization that that was actually my main sort of fear? Well, there, the, the interesting thing is, and I, and I don't, I can't remember exactly where I, I read this from, but I really, it, the change in life, which comes down for me to learning, it's all just a process of learning. The, the fear of learning or the fear of change comes down to three things. One, most of us believe that if I, if I grow or I change or I learn, then I'm going to lose something I have right now. And so we don't even want to start the process because it's like, oh crap, I could lose something I have right now and I don't want to do that. Okay. The second one is the fear of, of change, which is the growing pains, which is what, what am I going to have to go through in this process of growth or evolution on my way to what it is I want. Okay. And there's that, the, the, those natural fears of growing pains that just occur. And then the third fear, which is the one that I think highlights this the most, is that we're really afraid of getting to what it is we think we want and then sadly discovering it's not actually what we want. And so I believe that when you combine all three of those fears together, they disappear because they're so prevalent when it comes to change that we almost disappear them or make them invisible to ourselves in order to be, to quote you, comfortable. And so it's, it's, a, it's a matter of getting uncomfortable long enough to discover what's been really at play in, your, in the shadow, so to speak. So that's what I think we really d dove deep into and, and uncovered what those actual fears were. And, and it was, I remember the moment when you actually came to the epiphany, holy crap, I think I'm actually afraid of stepping fully into my power. Uh, and it was, the, it, I love the shocked look on your face when you were, you were like, holy crap, I actually think I'm afraid of my own power. And I was like, most people are. We're afraid that if we, if we step fully into that, that we might fail or that we might end up developing expectations from other people in our lives that look up to us and that they'll stick us up on some sort of pedestal and in that moment we'll lose our human uh, our humanity our humanness and we won't be able to make a mistake um, have a problem experience a challenge or an obstacle uh, deal with an issue again and so we just go you know what better to stay right here where I'm at because at least I know this and so really if we want to take it down the ultimate fear is the fear of the unknown or the uncertain Right, and very quickly into this process, and I know we were dealing up to this for about a year with like uh, sporadic uh, two hour sort of sessions, <laughs> uh, but maybe you have some comments on that, yeah. considering your, your laughter. Go ahead, why are you laughing there? Um, the reason I'm laughing is because most of the time when, when I'm communicating, because I'm, I'm trained in unconscious communication and not, and not necessarily fully conscious communication, which for me feels more like an actual education, not indoctrination. Uh, I'm not talking to the one of you that's already limited. I'm talking to the one of you that's always experienced learning in any given moment, even times that you're not aware of that learning experiencing. Um, that I remember actually over the course progression, you continuing to come back and hire me to work with you, even though at the end of every single one of those sessions, you were something like, I don't know if this was worth my time, or I don't know if this was good, but you know, I'll call you later, <laughs> or, or I'll email you later. And, and that was really funny for me because that, that's a, a direct experience of what we call an unconscious, a conscious unconscious dissociation, which is your conscious mind fully wasn't aware of what had occurred, but your unconscious mind's like, something happened, I like this. You know what I mean? And so you have that sort of almost what appears like a bipolar moment. <laughs> well, yeah, I have to say this. Uh, we haven't brought up the hypnotism sort of angles to these things, but mm. I was introduced to you actually by Sasha Day Game. That's why you're in Arcapoco uh, helping with his sort of uh, uh, relationship related things. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I knew he said, you're really good. You're one of the top in the business. Uh, and I'm like, I need the top in the business of anything right now. I'll try anything. I just, I've been, I can't find the answer at all. I'm not even close. 
And the, basically I was introduced to you, well, he's a hypnotherapist. Okay, yeah. so I assume while I'm sitting there, you're gonna pull out like a watch. <laughs> and we, we talk. Monocle. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Those spiral glasses. So we talked for two hours and actually the talking part just alone was such a big help because I had held so much inside. Uh, one of my big lessons, I, you know, some of these psychedelics do help uh, in some ways. And one of them was it taught me for however it did, to that I needed to accept help. It said, let others help you. That's my one learning experience for ayahuasca. And I really did learn that over time that, yeah, you can't do this all on your own. In fact, I don't even know if it's possible to do it all on your own from what I know now. I think you need outside help uh, for a lot of these things. But we have one session and we talk about a lot and sometimes I'm crying and stuff. And at the end of it, I'm like, I don't remember being, he didn't do any hypnosis. We just chatted but I feel better. I just felt better getting it off my chest. And then I go through some more struggles. I call you back. I go, Johnny, let's talk again. We talk. This went on three, four times. Finally, on the fifth session, I went, you know, I, I can tell what you're doing is helping, but I don't know why. And, and then I, I just said to you right up front, I go, why do you call yourself a hypnotherapist? Because you never hypnotize me. And you go, yeah, I do. Every time I have. And I'm like, what? Because it's not what you think it is. Maybe you can explain what... Even here, for example, most of this week, uh, you would tell me afterwards that I was under hypnosis, but we're just chatting. We'll be in a restaurant or anywhere, but you, what is it exactly that you're, that you're doing there? Okay, so what I practice is, is not the antiquated, the antiquated days of hypnosis being uh, relegated to dark alleys and back, <laughs> ba um, or stages, uh, stage hypnosis and, and the days of the pocket watch and all the rest of that stuff. Um, what I actually enjoy is all that we know about neuroscience now. And one of the recent articles that I've read says that, the, uh, that our unconscious minds are taking in about 400 billion bits of information per second. That is an astronomical amount of information. And yet, the, about seven plus or minus two bits of information per, per second is what our conscious minds, what, our act, what I call our active awareness can be aware of in any given moment. So from 400 billion, billion to seven. To seven plus or minus two, so at most <laughs> nine bits per second. So our conscious is not getting hardly anything, but our unconscious is getting everything. Yes, and so for me, uh, the, the techniques I've learned from my mentors and my teachers and all the studies that I've done over the years allows me to structure communication in such a way as to speak to both of you at the same time. And so your conscious mind gets the learning and the lesson that it wants to pay attention to or needs to pay attention to the most while the rest of it gets acknowledged by the rest of you. So I'm sure that everybody that's listening right now has had the experience of somebody asking a question to you and you give them an answer and you know somewhere inside of you, it's the right answer. But if they were to ask you, where'd you learn that? You, psh, I got no clue. I can't recall. I can't remember any of that. Well, oftentimes we actually did listen to that or learned that when we could have picked that up from a teacher, we could have picked that up from a book, we could have picked that up from a documentary, we could have picked that up from, from a casual conversation we overheard someone say, but it stuck. It got stuck there. And as a result of being cued in the moment, it shows up. Now, you can use this same principle in hypnosis to utilize what we call a trance state, which is a specific state of mind that allows for learning, deeper forms of learning and multi-layered communication. And that's all we were doing is, is I was chatting with you on many levels at the same time. Probably one of the first things that we did here that I went, wow, this changes everything was I think it was the second day. We were talking a lot about why can't I be comfortable in social situations? Mm -hmm. Why do I have so much trouble with that? And then why, when I have a couple of drinks, am I all of a sudden okay? And you explained it to me that once I had a couple of drinks, my unconscious mind kicked in and it was running the show. But it turns out my unconscious mind seems to have been stuck back at about 14 years old due to a number of things that happened to me in childhood. A lot of a lack of love, uh, basically no communication or love my entire childhood. So it stayed stuck at 14. So when I started drinking, I was a 14 year old, which explains for a lot of you who've seen my actions over the years when I'm drinking, that uh, that's not the conscious me, that's the unconscious. But the unconscious has been because of it has never had the teaching to learn and to be able to expand or grow up, you could say. It's been stuck at 14. Now this, along with other things, had led me to the point where I, and maybe you can explain it, but I was just never comfortable. If I'm outside of my house, if I'm in a restaurant, not comfortable, 
Got to check my phone. Got to have a cigarette. Get me a drink. Just, I couldn't sit in my own skin. And maybe you can explain that. But whatever you did in the first few days, we were sitting there at a, at a sandwich shop. <laughs> and I, it, I was as fine as could be. And I've never been that way. As far as I can remember my entire adult life. If I'm there at that sandwich shop, well, we should get going. Well, I should check my email. Uh, get me a cigarette or something. I, yeah, and talking to people, forget about it. It's like, if I don't have a drink, I don't even want to talk to them. All of a sudden, I was completely fine. I felt peaceful. I felt happy. I felt I was communicating and talking the same way I would when I've had a few drinks, but without the drinks whatsoever. So how would you explain what happened there? And, and you know, like, because to me that, and then after that, we went for five more days and everything got better and better and better. But even if we stopped there, I'd be like, this was worth the entire week. This was worth all the money. I can now feel peaceful and comfortable in public without having a drink. That alone. So what, how would you explain what happened there? And maybe for people out there, because I know a lot of people out there feel the exact same way. That's why most people, they go to a party, they have some drinks because they're not very comfortable being in the, such, those situations. So how would you explain how, we, how you so quickly, in one day it seemed, although we've been working together for a year, but it seemed like all, almost overnight, I'm good. What happened? Um, well, a couple things. Number one, beliefs. These, uh, these structures by which we organize our reality is built on assumptions, certain things that we've linked together inside of our minds, like this means this or this leads to this. And as a result of, the, of these beliefs, if we never have any update, if we never get any new learning, if we never get an, a proper education around it, then we stay with those beliefs and those structures, and a lot of them are, are sitting in the background. A lot of them are unconscious. And as a result, we then develop coping mechanisms or defense mechanisms that will allow us to maintain those beliefs. <laughs> this is called, we call this cognitive dissonance. Okay, and that means that um, you're gonna sort your reality or sort information as it comes in to fit into what you already know or what you already believe. This creates stability. But the problem is, is now you're experiencing a stability in any, in any way that's not the way you want. So, so even though it feels stable, it still sucks. Mm -hmm. And so what I experienced with you is that in social settings, you, you would do anything you could to distract yourself from the truth of what was going on emotionally on a deeper level. Anything you can do with your hands, anything you can di distract yourself with externally to keep yourself from addressing what was going on internally. And this is a, a, a good defense mechanism if you have no other way to sort your reality and ultimately grow or evolve. And so all I did was help enrich your reality by sharing with you other ways you can navigate your inner landscape, by teaching you how to shift, change, and reauthor, redraw your maps for life. Yeah, it's quite phenomenal. Uh, yeah, it's, I still am just a, getting used to it, uh, just feeling good. And I think what you're saying about how when you have a certain belief system in your unconscious for the most part and you're like well this is like that because of this and if that information's wrong to start with you just start piling more and more things on top of it to the point where you get like me 47 and you're like i'm effed up that's basically how i describe myself to most people how are you i'm pretty i'm pretty effed up <laughs> it's like why i don't know i've thing you know but you sort of help me through what you do to get rid of those uh, false beliefs at the very bottom, which enabled it. So through things you did, my subconscious just went, oh, well, if those things change, then we have to start changing. We have to look at every single thing we think and adjust it now. And that's how I felt this week. It's been really, uh, it's like I've been like reprogrammed. And a lot of people might say, Jeff, bro, just got brainwashed or whatever. But it, it's like actually deprogramming me and now I'm reprogramming myself with based on the, the better information I now have. Is that a good way to describe it? 
Yeah, I like the way you described it though. You called it brain squeegeeing. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I said on the second day, I said, I feel like I had my brain squeegeed. Everything's so much clearer now. Yeah. The way I look at it is is let's look at the words. The words brainwashed has been really negatively associated because of, of torture and, and all, you know, yeah. trying to, try, trying <laughs> to got... shove really bad <laughs> ideas into people's minds in order for them to do things that are, would be completely out of their character. But I like the term brainwashed. Right. You know, if, if something's dirty and something's, <laughs> and something's messy, clean it up, <laughs> wash it, um, and find out what's really sitting underneath it. And so for me, what I, what I was, um, doing the best I could to help you was to, to recognize that when you have a weed in your yard or a series of weeds in your yard, they can grow so big that you can become proud of your garden of weeds. <laughs> uh, and, and, and somebody can come along and say, well, why don't we weed whack? Why don't we take this big weed whacker and why don't we just chop the weeds? Which, if you've ever gardened anywhere at, at any point in your life, know that it just kicks the weed seeds even farther in your garden. But a really, really good gardener knows that for, before you plant any really beautiful trees, any beautiful plants, any beautiful flowers, vegetables. You want to pull those weeds. You want to pull them by the root. That way, when you pull it out, it's guaranteed not to come back. And in that place, in the place of those roots, is this fertile soil. And you get to plant any seed you want there and ultimately create what thoughts, or in this case, root beliefs, you want that will serve your life. And so what I found at the root of who you are, for lack of a better metaphor, is a bunch of weeds. Uh, and you had tried everything you could up until this point to whack it off from the top, from the outside in, mm. as opposed to going deep into the ground and pulling it from the root and then getting a chance to till the soil and plant something that you want to have grow there. Yeah, it's uh, pretty amazing. Uh, and then we went on and what I learned is that I had very low emotional intelligence, basically because I had locked myself, basically I, I, I guess I was so traumatized from such a lack of love at a young age that I just turned off all my emotions completely, basically. And uh, a lot of people have sort of said that about me, like Jeff doesn't seem to ever get angry. It's like, I, don't, I didn't know what angry was. I, I don't feel anything. I've cut them all off because numb. Of, I was just numb for yeah. the most part. So you taught me a lot, and this is just sort of basic teaching. This was sort of like classroom work about mm. how emotions work. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that's why you would feel that way. For example, one thing is uh, anger. Uh, ask yourself right now, if you're sitting there watching, what is anger? A lot of you won't get the correct question, uh, answer as far as Johnny understands it. Most people would be kind of confused at the question, right? And I was too. The answer, according to Johnny, is it's uh, how you feel when someone um, breaks your boundaries or, or transgresses against your boundaries, whether it be physically or psychologically or whatever it could mm. be. So I didn't, I had no understanding of these things. And so you just kind of taught me that stuff. And then we got to a point where we were actually talking in the restaurant and, and I just brought up and Johnny said, just talk because you have all these new ideas coming up and he needs to hear them so he can help guide me through these the Feedback these is important. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So I said, Johnny, I don't know what it is my whole life. I'll be talking to people. And this is how I said, it. I said, I'll be talking to them, but it's like, it's like, I, I don't, I'm not connected to them, uh, sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. And right as soon as I said that, I saw his eyes go and he just stood up right away and he, and he says, let's remove that. And what he told me after was, it was my subconscious that went like this. I don't know what it is, but what my subconscious was saying was we put up a wall. <laughs> or it could have been an energetic shield. It could be whatever term you want to use for it, block, obstacle. But all I noticed is that your hand <laughs> went all the way over your body when you said it. And so in my head, I went, what if I just took him literally? And that his unconscious mind is actually saying to me right now, this is where it is and this is what it looks like and this is what happens. And so all I did was uh, stand, uh, and if I, if I can remember this correctly, I, th I believe I stood up and walked over to you and I went, what happens if I just do this? <laughs> and I grabbed where you had put the, the wall, so to speak, and just pulled it away. And then looked, went back, sat down and said, and now how much easier is it to connect? <laughs> and it was like almost like I was more connected. It, it was that simple. A lot of these things aren't that, this is what we've been talking about a lot of the week. So many people are so screwed up. I think everyone can agree on that. I don't think anyone would disagree. 
uh, most people are really screwed up. Now, if you look at our cult, our culture, our society, the schools, the colleges, they're not teaching them anything that seems to work. Uh, if you know, if you got a problem and psychologically, well, take this pill. Now, now, yeah, you're not as uh, angry anymore, but you're basically lobotomized. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's uh, the typical thing, don't fix the problem, fix, fix the symptoms. Uh, and, you know, everyone's asking for answers out there. And the, the answer, if I could answer from what I know, and I'm just finishing this first week of like real change, it's not that difficult, but it, it's, no one seems to know this information. Um, <laughs> preach. <laughs> uh, the, um, I actually, over the last, I'd say six months to eight months, I've been really, really getting clear about this myself and trying to come up with labels because words actually have power. Uh, and for me, uh, the words I came up with, and, and, and there's a lot of people that have been talking about this is I call it institutionalized ignorance, which is if you want to control someone, okay. And, and I'm a hypnotist. So there's a lot of, of people who have, are mistaken about what it takes to control someone. One of the best things you can do if you actually want to do that is limit the amount of information they're aware of so that they have to look to you for the answers to these questions. And then what you do is you give them just enough of an answer to appease them until you can distract them. Here's the coping mechanism. You can distract them onto something else. And so for me, I don't think anybody knows this because there is an entire business, a market, a whole lifestyle that's built around ignorance. So if you don't know how to resolve your own problems, then you have to go to a doctor, you have to go to someone who can tell you how to do that. And ultimately, they don't want you as a patient just once, they want to have you as a patient forever. And, and that feeds the system. Now, of course, if you go to the doctors themselves and say, you know that you're falling prey to this, most of them aren't even aware that they're involved in this system like that because they've been, quote, brainwashed their whole careers that this is how it operates. Yep. This is how the, the insurance companies work. This is how yep. the laws are written. This is just how it is. Mm -hmm. And so they, they just step into that role as if that's the only truth. Well, I happen to have a different truth. <laughs> Yeah, and we've been talking a lot this week about how we can uh, help get this out there to people. Um, just like anything, they want the truth to be stopped. They don't want people to get this information, but we don't really care what they want. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're not going to let them stop us. And you're going to see a lot of that coming from me, by the way. I am feeling very much like I'm ready to uh, take the next level on these sort of things. But we talked a lot about how to really get this out to people. I guess this is actually sort of the first step. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, um, not many. I asked you like how many people do exactly what you do, and you, you're like not many. Not many do exactly what I do now. Right. So I, you know, one of the first steps for you is to get this in a way that we can get it out to more people, whether, mm. cause you can't talk to 6 billion people all one on one, right? So you're yeah. working on various ways to do that. And mm -hmm. we'll definitely be keeping up to date on that. Um, we're also going to have you speaking on Narcopoco and uh, you might even do a workshop beforehand. You haven't decided what it might be yet, but you really had some great ideas about sort of why anarchy isn't catching on like it should be, uh, why it's not growing as fast as it should. And it's growing a lot, but it can grow so much faster. And, and you had sort of a few reasons. Um, and, and you brought up the last time you were at Anarchapoka was two years ago. And you said you liked the information, but I, there was a lot of angry people, a lot of fearful people. And I told you that's actually changed in the last few years. Mm -hmm. So that's good. But then you said, but I looked at the, the speakers and many of them were just talking at the people. They weren't having a conversation. They weren't actually really educating uh, uh, in, in many ways. It was mostly just here's how it is sort of a thing. And you thought that we should really change that. So this has really affected my thinking on that. So I think you're going to see it in Arcapoco next year, a lot more interaction, a lot more, a lot less talking at you and a lot more edu educating and, and, and solutions, ways to get things, things to, uh, you know, to, to improve it. Uh, and th the other thing that, that people um, really kind of get, I kind of forgot what it was actually. This has happened a few times this week. <laughs> uh, Not uncommon. Yeah. Um, but 
there's a few issues with why anarchy isn't growing. Oh, the, I actually just got it back. Actually, if you just wait long enough, it eventually pops into your head. I'm just learning like that. if you're like looking for your keys all over your house and you keep looking and keep looking, but you go, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go do something else. Right. And then boom, yep. your keys just show up. Yeah. And you can actually learn how to improve your communication mm -hmm. with your subconscious a lot. And none of this stuff gets taught in school. So we really, really want to get a lot of stuff out there. But the other thing about anarchy is you really have to realize, and Johnny's impressed this on me a lot this week, that really all the things the state's doing and the government and the schools, they're all a form of brainwashing. And I've said this many times in the past, everyone seems like they're brainwashed, but they actually really are. <laughs> so we have to learn to uh, get through to these brainwashed people. And, and Larkin Rose has done that a bit with his Candles in the Dark. I really want to, uh, you know, and start to talk to people in ways that we can kind of almost brainwash them ourselves with the good information. It, it's really like so crazy. But, you know, it's really about how can we get this information out? Because to me, this is quite simple. I know you've done it for 25 years. Every minute of every day you're thinking about it. Like, it, yeah. it looks simple, but <laughs> it, it hasn't been that simple to come to these answers. But you've really got it to a point. And you've done about 15 of these sort of one week sort of things now. Uh, this is fairly new for you to be doing like a one week sort of retreat with people and you mostly work with like CEOs, a lot of billion dollar companies sort of people. It's not cheap just so you know. So if you're thinking, oh, I'll pay 500 bucks and uh, I'll go for a week with Johnny, no. Uh, but um, you've really seemed to have gotten the key to how to get, you know, I looked for years for the answer and I couldn't even get close and, and you could just do it. So we really got to figure out a way to get this out to more people. So, you know, w w Sun's going down here a little bit, uh, and we should wrap this up fairly soon, but is there anything you can think of that you would want to tell people out there who are looking for answers, where to start even, where, where's the process even start with that? Um, I think for me, the simplest and easiest answer is awareness. It's in becoming aware of your own self looking for and paying attention to your own behaviors and the, the repetitive nature of certain patterns or, or programs or habits that you have. Not just in what you do externally, but literally in ways you think. Like, do you find yourself afraid of specific contexts? Do you find yourself avoiding certain conversations? Becoming aware of these things is really just the first step. Because once you're aware of it, you're bringing into consciousness something that has been largely unconscious for a really long time. And this is going to start the ball rolling. Secondly, use doubt. Actually use doubt. Most of, the, most of the time, most of us use doubt in a way um, that hurts us. We, we, want, we set ourselves to a goal or we set ourselves to an intention that we want for our lives and then we immediately find ourselves doubting that we'll get it or doubt that it's possible or doubt that I can expand or learn or grow. And that's, and for me, not the most um, positive way to be utilizing the questioning of, of our truth. Instead, why don't we start questioning and doubting some of the things that limit us? And by just seeding that doubt, just questioning, is it possible there's another way I could think? Is it possible there's another way I could be? Is it possible there's another way I could live? The beginning of those kinds of questions allows your mind to open up to new possibility. And that's really where I would start. Yeah, and that's sort of what I've been saying for a little while now, that it really start. well, actually, Narcopoco and even a lot of the, the anarchists in the last year or two, it's really been, the anarchists used to be, well, the government sucks and, and we don't like it at all. And why can't people realize that? Mm. And it's really morphed in the last few years to a lot of people realizing it actually starts with you. Mm. The change starts with you. And I know that sounds really kind of almost hippy dippy to some Corny people. almost yeah, and corny. cliche. Yeah, 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 yeah corny yeah. or cliche, but it really does. How would you explain to people why it really does start with you? Uh, like I would sort of say you kind of do create your own reality. So if you're a mess inside, you're going to create a mess kind of outside. How would you explain to people that in a different way, how it really starts with them and how they can actually affect the entire world by, by starting with fixing themselves? Um, I would say with getting clear about the fact that all the rea the only reality we ever actually deal with is our own subjective reality. That yes, we can listen to other people talk, but do we really truly understand what they see inside of their mind, how they hear, how they perceive reality? Uh, until we actually have a way of connecting our brains together directly, mm -hmm. 
um, I haven't seen a way for me to become you or to see through your eyes. And so as a result of that, literally our entire realities are designed by us, through us, for us, around us. But in surrounding ourselves with support systems, with positive individuals, with people that do embody or represent who we want to become or how we want to think, we're giving ourselves the opportunity to gain an education, to learn by listening to them and engaging with them. Because when you're talking to me, you're saying words, but enunciating those words and, and setting up frames of reality through how you perceive things. Well, if my unconscious mind has never perceived the reality through that lens, if I've never seen the world with those glasses on, how am I supposed to know it even exists? So by surrounding myself with really, really great people, I give myself the best chance to try on more and more potential realities that are worth entertaining. And so as a result, the same thing goes in reverse. The more I work on myself, the more other people that are around me are going to get the opportunity to experience how I perceive reality and that gives them a chance to see an option or a possibility they never saw before. This is ultimately how we affect people and connect with people on a daily basis. And of course, the more, the more people have an opportunity to spend time uh, speaking to the masses like yourself, the more lives you get to share your reality with and the more possibility they perceive. Yeah, it's all fascinating stuff. I've been fascinated as much as anything else this week, just learning these new ways that I didn't know about how to think about how all these things work. Uh, you know, when I thought about hypnosis, it was like guy with a watch. When I thought <laughs> about even psychiatrists, it's like, uh, it's gonna be some goofball with a notepad and tell me about your dad, you know? Like it just seemed like, but after having gone through everything I've gone through over the last couple of years and trying everything, this really was what worked for me. So thank you very much. I You're owe most you. Welcome. <laughs> I owe you so much. Uh, I can't even explain. Um, it's, it's you know I can't even explain to you uh, what I'm feeling right now. It's I've never felt it before. Um, and my wife's here, and we we're out on that lake. Yesterday we were out hiking. This is stuff I never did because I was in a box in my own brain and that box is gone now. And so I've actually become much more free. And it's quite beautiful when uh, you realize the freedom you can have. And, and like, uh, like we started off with, a lot of anarchists really get all uh, unhappy about the government and rightfully so. But I'll, I'll almost guarantee you, it's unless they're actually got you in a rape camp right now and you're getting raped right now due to government laws and government crap, pretty much everyone's biggest problem is probably themselves. And it can really kind of just start with just looking at yourself. Uh, just when you finish your day, and I've talked about meditation a lot, and I really like meditation. You're into that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. You, you call it more trance or whatever. It's a little, it's kind of a different words for the same similar thing. Mm. But just take a bit of time every day and go, you know, what really, you know, happened today? And why did I react how I did? And, mm. and just think about it. We don't think about it. That's what the television programming's for is they got you working all day. You go home, turn on the TV, drink some beer so you don't have to think too much. Uh, just as Johnny said, just start with looking at you and, and, you know, keep that open mind. And if you do want to change, have that as your, as your what, intention. intention. Um, yep. That was a big thing Johnny talked about this week. Clarity of intention. Clarity of intention. Uh, I knew I wanted to get better, but it was a very vague and, but you know what? I did have that intention mm -hmm. and I did finally get there at least to an extent. And there's still a long ways to go that like you were saying it's just the beginning, which I can't even imagine at this moment in time. But um, I did have that intention and I am in the place that I wanted to be now. And it took a couple of years, but you can get there, but it takes the intention. It takes looking at yourself. If you find yourself sad a lot or angry a lot, that's your unconscious or your body trying to tell you something's wrong. And if you don't pay attention to it and you don't try to find out what the real answer is, and it's not usually all that simple, you have to actually think about it. It's not as simple as, well, my team lost, that's why I'm angry. No, there's like, if you're generally that way, there's, there's something that you have not dealt with inside. So, so look for those things and just try to focus on, on working on yourself. I've, you know, that's something we've talked about all week, just doing the work mm -hmm. and you know, in our society, in our cult, no one really talks about this stuff. It's like, just 
pay your taxes, get your mortgage, you know, watch your television programming. Uh, people just don't talk about these things, and it's the most important thing, really. Mm. <laughs> right? For me, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, you are the center of your solar system. So if you really do want to take care of your family, if you really do want to help enrich your friends' lives, if you really do want to help the greater community and contribute, there is no more important place to begin than with you. Because then you get to affect everything else around that. One of my favorite quotes is, without you, nothing in your life works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, all the things I've done over the last few years, and a lot of them are great, by the way. He acts, Johnny intermittent fasts as well. I've talked a lot about that. I think fasting is great. I've done so many of those sort of physical things. And uh, so many people said, I, I do read the YouTube comments. I read them a lot more now, by the way. I've really opened up to this stuff. But uh, I did read in the past, a lot of people said, Jeff, uh, you know, you're doing all this physical stuff, but you're not really dealing with the real problem. And, it's, and they'd sort of say, it's, you have to find God or it's inside. And those are actually all sort of similar sort of things. There's, there are different ways of explaining, figure out who you are, connect with whatever this is, you know, like f get that sorted out. And so you guys were right, the guys who said that. But don't disregard all the physical health stuff. That stuff oh, is no. still awesome. It's, Im it's imperative too. Yeah. Because your machine, the, your, your mind is a, is a part of your quote brain, so to speak. And actually for, from, in my opinion, your, your mind is literally all of it put together. Um, but if you don't give the machine the optimum state for it to, to reach for these new thoughts, these new ideals, these new methodologies, these new beliefs, you're, you're, you're gonna slow down. It's gonna take longer to do that too. So all of that stuff still plays. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we should leave it at that. So my wife's here. We're going to go for a wonderful Italian dinner tonight after spending the day on the lake and all this stuff I've never done. Actually, my, <laughs> my wife's in shock. You've seen she's her. In shock. She's in shock. She's in shock. She's, yeah, she's literally in shock. Uh, she's like, what's going on? Who are you? Uh, but she's very happy about whatever's going on. So that's great. And uh, so you're going to be at Anarchapoco next mm -hmm. year. Super happy about it, by the way. I think, I just got to say, I think Johnny's one of the pieces that we've been missing. And, and you know, the, the thing that you bring to the table, we, we have not gotten to yet. And that's this sort of subconscious, conscious stuff. This answers a lot of the questions. This is what we've been missing in a lot of ways. So I'm really happy that Johnny's gonna be speaking there. He's gonna be doing, I guarantee you that your, your talk is going to be one of the best talks because I just know what you do. Uh, you might also do a workshop beforehand. We'll see yep. how that goes. We'll plan on that, uh, uh, you know, uh, later in, in time. Is there anything you want to let people know if they want to, uh, for example, your company, if they do are interested in working with you? I know you're incredibly busy and all that, mm -hmm. but maybe you can just uh, let people know if they do want to follow you in one way or another uh, yeah how they can. yeah if they want to check me out you guys can check me out at processyourpotential.com that is uh that's my therapy website and um, i'm also the new co-owner of a company called your charisma coach uh, and what we do is we help guys and gals who uh who have social anxiety and, a, and, a, and um, when it comes to social interactions they want to grow their emotional intelligence and their social intelligence and really show the world what they're made of uh, to develop those uh, charismatic principles and really imbue them into everything in their life in order for them to become not just charming, but to truly live a charismatic life. So those are the two best ways to get a hold of me is to check out those websites. Uh, or you guys can email me at Johnny, which is J-O-N-N-Y, at processyourpotential.com. That's awesome. I didn't even know you had a website. That's how busy I am. I, I <laughs> actually just said you were good. So I'm going to check out your website, just see what's on there. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned, you're going to be around uh, at Narcopoco and uh, you're, I know you're working on so many things. So as you come out with uh, more of things that you're working on, we'll definitely have you back on and talk about them because I think it's so important. And once again, thank you very much, my friend. An uh, absolute <laughs> pleasure. And thank you for the chance to, to help support you in your life. Oh, thank you. I, you know, thank you. <laughs> no words, no words. Uh, but uh, I really want to uh, help other people out there as well. So. If you're looking for the answers, if, if, first of all, if you recognize you are not happy for whatever reason, try to figure out why. And if you can't figure out why, maybe get some help one way or another. Talk to some people, you know. That was the first step for me, was just, you know, there's this thing in our society about, you know, strong man, no ask for help, no cry. No, that's not really. <laughs> Sometimes all you need is a reflection in order for you to see what's really going on. And there's no more important reflection than those beautiful support systems that you yearn most for. 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, just look at yourself. Uh, you know, all the other stuff I've been talking about, meditation, and even the psychedelics, I gotta say, they cracked open the door for me. But I don't think that's the real answer when it comes to true happiness, is just taking a bunch of drugs, you know, medicine, plants, you know, whatever you wanna call them. I think if you've got some problems, it's really going to take you going inside and, and, and really looking at it, which you can do with the psychedelics. So, you know, I'm not saying they're bad or good or anything like that. I think they are one of many useful tools. It's, um, it's the same for me as, um, as a final thought. It's the same as any other therapeutic modality. It, it is a way. It is not the way. Mm -hmm. And so it's just continue to explore, continue to play, continue to seek. Uh, and be willing to stay dedicated and persevere until you discover what your equation is uh, in order for you to find your new truth. Couldn't say it any better. I think the best to leave it at that. And uh, uh, we'll put the links to all your stuff down below. And uh, you know, if you're out there and you, you like this video, please uh, like, subscribe, share down below. Share it with people if you see them kind of hurting. Everyone's hurting. I don't know, <laughs> everyone, I, I see it, everyone's hurting. So we gotta get this information out to them the one way or another. There is hope uh, and it's not that hard. It is hard. Uh, it is really hard for a lot of people to look at themselves. Mm. But when you really think about the mechanics of what I had to do, it wasn't that hard. Like the mechanics of it. No. I had to spend a couple weeks talking this stuff out and looking in the mirror and getting a person who knows how to, to help me reorganize my stuff. But really the mechanics of it it's not all that hard, but I guess really getting to the point where you are ready to look at yourself, mm. you know? Many people just for some reason just, uh, they, they're not. Um, but don't be afraid of doing that. And actually, in fact, you should be doing that. If you haven't done that, then you're not much better than all those status out there who are all robots. You're basically an anarchist robot who doesn't look at yourself. You, mm. you, you know government's bad, but you're still a robot if you haven't really looked at yourself. So I hope this uh, has, um, given some people some inspiration or some information that they didn't already have. I'm in the middle of it right now, but I wanted to get this out because I really feel this is really important. And uh, so if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share down below. And that's it for Anarchast from Jasper, Alberta. I actually kind of came home to find myself again, kind of all funny, all these weird things. They all kind of seem to just line up that way. Close too. the circle. Yeah, a little bit. Actually, I have to go talk to my dad tomorrow about my childhood to kind of fully complete the circle <laughs> and then forgive him because he didn't know. And mm. that's all fine. And that's all part of the process. So that's it for Anarchast. You're home for Anarchy on the internet. Peace. Love. Your peace. That's his thing. I'm love. Anarchy. There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable people. To see if we could become something more. So when they needed us, we could fight the battles. That they never could. Time, the state will know what it's like to lose. To feel so desperately that it's right, yet to fail all the same. Dread it. Run from it. Freedom still arrives. Vacate the state. Engage all the speakers. And get this man a microphone. Fun isn't something that one considers when eradicating tyranny. <laughs> but this does put a smile on my face.